Be Rad podcast is brought to you by MoFo, male optimization formula with organs to boost testosterone. Brad's macadamia masterpiece, mind-blowing nut butter blend, now offered on Amazon. Chili technology, temperature-controlled mattress systems for a good night's sleep. InsideTracker.com, offering blood, DNA, and fitness tracking data all in one place. And Organifi, whole food organic superfood supplements and drink blends. And please visit the shopping page at bradkearns.com for my personal selection of favorite products for health, fitness, and peak performance with great discounts for listeners. Here we go with the show. I want them to see me get rejected so then I can poke myself and say, look, I'm still corporeal. Mm -hmm. I'm still here. I didn't burst into dust. I'm still awesome. I'm still enough. I'm still a really cool guy for lots of women. And I want my, my lesson or my clients to learn the same thing as I want you to know that if you approach that woman and she rejects you, blows you out, you're still a man. You're still a great guy. We're trying to attract the women who are really into Connell, really into Brad, really into your sort of core persona. And the cool thing about this is you can let go of the dates that don't have that connection. I'm such a cliche, just another golf <laughs> journalist turned dating coach. We're so sick of this. Let's talk about dating with a real expert and get ready for a wild show with a bunch of interesting insights, not just for people on the single scene dating, but all kinds of male female interactions and building confidence through courage. It's a great show with a very interesting guest named Connell Barrett. He's actually a longtime prominent golf writer. I recognized his name. And now he's America's favorite dating coach, as many awards have uh, been uh, bestowed upon him. Uh, he wrote a book called Dating Sucks, But You Don't. And you are going to learn all about his unique strategies and insights. He favors something called radical authenticity. And boy, it sounds so easy when he talks about it. Uh, but it's interesting to drill down into this because so many of us come into social situations with shyness, insecurity, flawed notions of what females want to hear or what they want you to do. So let's get some of this stuff sorted out because guess what? Connell can fix almost any dating problem because he's had every dating problem. He was shy, dateless, and lonely. He didn't just live in the friend zone. He owned a condo there. When he finally found a woman who liked him, he married her and she dumped him nine weeks later. That's when he decided to change and embark on a five-year-long globe-trotting quest to understand the art of male-female connection. And in the show, you're going to find out why looks don't matter. You're going to find out that consent is sexy, especially as we are dating in the Me Too era. You're going to find out how to overcome anxiety and actually meet women in real life. Yes, the lost art of real life here in the age of online dating. Many more interesting insights to come. And certainly they apply even to a couple in a long-term relationship where you want to have your A-game and be a wonderful, enjoyable company and keep that spark alive for months and years ahead rather than just your first or second or third date. So let's hear it all from Connell Barrett, author of Dating Sucks, But You Don't. Connell Barrett, world-famous golf writer turned dating coach. I'm so excited to connect with you on this level to talk about your new book. Uh, but I also want to kind of have you introduce yourself to the audience because I was a huge follower of yours for many years and you were deep into the golf scene and you made a, right. a wonderful career transition. So I'd like to hear about that before we, before we head further down the road of uh, the, um, the, the, the winning pickup lines and how consent is sexy these days and all kinds of other fun stuff. Right. I'm such a cliche. Just another golf <laughs> journalist turned dating coach. We're so sick of this. So it's like actors who direct, right? It's such a, no. I, um, so I guess there's actually some lines to connect here because golf slash golf writing was a huge passion of mine. And I also loved playing golf because it was so hard, right? Mm. Golf is hard to do well. And so I got into golf journalism because I wanted to write about it. I loved it, but also because I wanted to play free golf and get lessons and get mm. good at it. And similarly, when I left my old job at Golf Magazine and Sports Illustrated covering golf, I got 
I had already gotten into this, but I also began studying the art of connecting with women, the art of dating. How do you approach? How do you get out of the friend zone? How do you find confidence and, and find true love? And I realized that, oh, I pretty much shifted into this career because just like golf, girls are challenging. Dating is challenging. So it was about wanting, it was about because I love the subject. I love learning how to be a better man through the lens of your dating life. And also I realized that golf and girls, two of the greatest challenges I've ever faced. And maybe that's why I've, I've tackled both topics. I love it. It's, you know, that's what life's all about is taking on challenges that uh, you have a passion and an interest for. Um, yeah, you're, you're right. They're, they're both pretty, they're both pretty challenging. So you mentioned this uh, getting out of the friend zone is one of the, one of the, the first topics. And is that a, is that a huge uh, deal these days? It's like a, a major complaint of men uh, trying to, trying to make that jump or something. Yeah, I would say the top three or four problems that single men face in their dating lives is in no particular order, how do you talk to women? How do you flirt and create that attraction? How do you approach? Every single straight man I've ever met has wanted to approach an attractive woman, but most of them can't, don't know how, feel fear. And the friend zone is a big one too, where a guy might be getting a lot of dates or have a lot of women in his life who he talks to and is interested in, but they only see him as a quote unquote friend or they, a guy might have a lot of, fur. this was me, by the way, uh, back in the day, my 15 years ago, I, I was getting plenty of dates, but then I would get that day after text message that said, Hey, I had fun, but I'm not really <laughs> feeling that spark. Uh, but Hey, let's be friends. Let's hang out some other time, but just as friends. And don't get me wrong. I, I think having female friends is great and we shouldn't just look at women as they should like me as somebody sexual and romantic, but when there's genuine real chemistry between two people or there, or there could be, but that guy doesn't know how to sort of channel that, what I call man to woman communication, channel that romantic mm -hmm. vibe, then he is going to be friend zoned by a woman who wants to like him, <laughs> but she can't feel it. And I think one of the biggest myths about dating is that women put us in the friend zone, which is not true. Guys do it to themselves. Ooh. We do it to ourselves. And women are simply the ones who are saying, okay, you put yourself in the friend zone. I can't help it. It is what it is. I'm going to go date some other guy who makes me feel the way I want a man to make me feel. Mm. Wow. You know, it seems like there's possibly a, um, a tightrope here that we have to walk carefully. Uh, I, I like the work of John Gray, Men are from Mars and Women are from Venus, um, David Dita, The Way of the Superior Man. But there's this mm. message that, you know, people are attracted to someone who's confident, decisive. They express their needs and their wants. They take charge in a certain situation. And um, the, the female biological drive is to uh, be cared for and uh, be protected and have that sense, that feeling. But then today, we don't want to be uh, a, a jerk ass and be dictating right. all the shots and saying, the lady will have the steak and I will have the salmon. You know, that's kind of old school and that's, <laughs> right. that day's gone and women are empowered and liberated. So maybe we could, you could talk to us about that tightrope if it exists. I'm asking a question, but it, it seems to me the first thing that hit me was like, yeah, you're, you're in the, you just, you just got put in the friend zone because you're such a nice guy and you're not going to make an aggressive move and, and uh, upset the woman, but then you're, you're on your seventh date and you still haven't, you know, you still haven't said, Hey, come here, I got to grab you. So here we go. Yeah, Connor's exactly. going to set us up here. He's going to set us straight. Absolutely. The friend zone is of our own making. And the good news is that we can make the choice to escape it. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you can guarantee that every woman's going to be attracted to you. I, do, I don't define the friend zone as an attractive woman only wants to be my friend. That's not the definition of it. Lots of people aren't going to want to date me. Lots of women won't want to date me. The friend zone is a woman who wants to feel a certain way about me, about you, about any man. She likes you on paper. She finds you attractive, <laughs> but she doesn't, but she's just quote unquote not feeling it because of you, your behavior as a man. You're treating her more like a pal or a buddy. You're talking about business or politics or being overly polite and supplicating on a date instead of being really emotionally vulnerable, being a man, being honest, making a move when the time is right, flirting, letting her know you find her devastatingly sexy if that's how you feel. 
And the great news about this, as I, as I mentioned in my book, is that nice guys can, can and should and will get the girl. You can. W- women, there's a great quote, uh, a beautiful woman once said to me, nice guys are sexier than six-pack abs. We don't want to date jerks. We don't want to date, quote, unquote, bad boys. We don't want to date assholes. We want to date a nice guy. And then she added, as long as he has a backbone. As long as he has some strength, he has a steel spine, he can make the move. He can lead us on a great date. He knows how to flirt with us. Uh, Brad, I'm the nicest guy in the world, pretty much. I'm an, I literally help little old ladies cross the street. Uh, (laughs) I volunteer at a blind residence. I'm not saying this to impress anybody. I'm just saying this to let your viewers realize that, hey, you can be the nicest guy on the planet. You can be that sweet, nice gentleman. At the same time, you can still be a, a man with a woman on a date and make her feel the way we want her to feel so that if there's that mutual interest, you can smash out of the friend zone and, <laughs> and stop hearing, stop, stop hearing the words. Um, let's just be friends and start hearing. Let's go back to your place. Or hearing, um, Hey, I'm, I'm not feeling it and cut your losses. Right. Instead of these, things that linger on where you're uncertain and you're interpreting this text differently than yesterday's. And I I feel like there's possibly a lot of that going on where you got to cut ties if it's not a, um, a big connection. And I guess I could ask a follow-up question. There's um, how much of this, uh, this idea of chemistry do you ascribe to where you're going to tell in the first minute, Dr. Wendy Walsh, I think mentioned this on, on one of my interviews with hers um, mm. in four seconds, the female can tell whether she's going to go to bed with the man or, or some right. you know, these stats that we hear a lot. Yeah. Yeah. There's a great line in Californication where Hank Moody says, a woman knows in the first 30 seconds if she wants to fuck, marry, or kill the guy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a lot of truth. Are in those that. exclusive? It, oh no. <laughs> maybe a little bit of everything yeah. uh, but I think that I'm sorry Brad I lost train of thought because I took a side I know it's because my, question? my, my questions are too random. what was the question but, um, all right. let's see the question was uh, you know is that chemistry thing legit where yeah. you are going to know if there's a real connection in the first minute uh, and you know the research talks about the smells and the different immune systems and uh, things like that, mm-hmm. where you're not you're not going to be attracted to your first cousin is how the storyline goes. And then, right. you know, when is there is there something such as chemistry that it's not going to be working hard to get it six months later? Yeah, I think there is real chemistry that you can't force or fake. It has to be organic. And that's just nature doing its thing. At the same time, we can definitely put our thumb on the scale a little bit as men. We can do things that help amplify that inherent chemistry that might be there maybe maybe the the natural chemistry is there but it's it's sort of uh low burning embers we want to kn- learn as men we want to learn how to put a little gasoline on that and have a more of a brush fire as the date or the dates go on so so what i teach men to do among other things is be able to sort of channel I call I call this there's a lot there's a there's a channel of communication I call it man to woman communication it's a frame that a man needs to make sure that on a date or in a dating context that he creates a context so that both himself and the woman understand that this is a story of boy meets girl and that the the communication is man to woman by which I mean maybe it's flirting maybe it's teasing complimenting her busting her proverbial balls, pulling her proverbial pigtails, being yourself, as cliched as that is, being what I call radically authentic. Part of that Mm. is getting in touch with your desires as a man and letting a woman know how you're feeling about her. And through this law of of kind of contagious emotions, a lot of women are going to feel that connection and chemistry. Some Mm. aren't. And that's totally Mm. fine. We're not trying to attract every woman. We're trying to attract the women who are really into Connell, really into Brad, really into your sort of core persona. And the cool thing about this is you can let go of the dates that don't have that connection. It's not anything lacking in you. It might just be that she's, she's the stones. You're the Beatles. That's cool. Find a Beatles girl. The Beatles are the greatest band of all time. It doesn't mean you're not enough. It just means, oh, we're two different, we're two different types, and that's fine. On to the next uh, potential soulmate. You think you can find that quickly if you're attuned and there's no 
you know, noise in your, in your, um, in your operation, you're going to have one date and realize it or maybe not. It will take many reps to get to that point. I don't know mm. that you can, a, a man certainly knows if he's physically attracted to a woman right away. Right. However, it might take a little bit more than a date to realize if the two of you are emotionally connected. If you have your, what I call the big life stuff aligned, you know, you need our big life stuff to be relatively aligned to have a long-term potential together. Religion, age, where you live, things like that, kids, no kids, things like that. So that can take time. But I do, I do think that I do agree with the idea that chemistry, that raw kind of animal attraction is you're, you're both going to know on the first date if it's a if it's a hell yes or if it's a eh, maybe or if it's a hell no and if it's a hell yes obviously great if it's a maybe have a second date some hmm. people need a little time to kind of open up and get loose get comfortable if it's yeah. a hell no life's too short move on uh if it's a hell yes could that possibly get in the way cloud judgment um you know, lead you down a path that's, you know, going to be a disaster. I mean, I, I kind of feel like that story comes up frequently where you just have massive, you know, chemical spark, physical attraction, but um, we're skipping over some important parts of getting to know each other. And maybe you're not radically yeah. authentic because you're just too busy, um, you know, uh, uh, playing the game or something. Yeah, I guess it could create a problem. I suppose if, if a man and a woman really hit it off on a first date and it's that, that burning brush fire of chemistry and they get too intimate too quickly before they find out that, Hey, you want kids? I don't, or you're moving next week. And I just came to this town. That's a problem. Or maybe one of the people, this is usually something that happens with women, but it can also happen with men. Maybe you go to bed too quickly and maybe you get too emotionally invested too quickly, especially mm -hmm. if you have a lot of strong emotional links to sex, which I certainly do. And yeah, I, I like, I, I'd rather go too slow than too quickly. Mm -hmm. So there's something fun about, uh, what's that great Carly Simon song, Anticipation? It's kind of fun to, to build up to it and make sure you're both ready and that you're not jumping into bed slash each other's lives too quickly. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, can you talk more about this term that you've coined radical authenticity and yeah. especially in terms of how it might conflict with some of the popular information out there? Uh, Cause it, it se seems like, you know, some of John Gray's stuff, which I love and um, I, I think about it every day. And, you know, one of them is, Hey, you got to stay calm, cool and collected as the man. You got to be the guy in control, the Kung Fu master. And that means, eating your little petty, uh, you know, hurt feelings and things like that and going off and doing testosterone boosting activities and then coming back to the relationship refreshed where you don't have to nitpick your, your woman and make her feel, uh, uh, you know, unprotected. And that's not the same as uh, radical authenticity and showing the real you and showing how your feelings do get hurt when she talks too long at the party to another man or whatever was going on in your head. You know, where do we, right. where do we balance that? I, I agree with the general sentiment of Gray's philosophy. And I'm, who am I to criticize him? He sold a hell of a lot more books than I have so far. So I admire him for that. At the same time, I think that radical authenticity in a couple of sentences, it means leaning into who you truly are at your core and aligning your thoughts, words, and actions from that place at the highest frequency possible. It doesn't mean, oh, what am I thinking and feeling right now? I'm butthurt because you flirted with, with another guy. Uh, in other words, it doesn't mean be an open wound. It means be an open book. <laughs> uh -huh. Have something of value, but be a very transparent and open about that. Um, you can absolutely open up to a woman about how you're feeling, even if it's something that's scary. I would argue that that's actually a sign of strength, a sign of value. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day and the end of the date, what a woman wants, it comes down to two words. She wants something that has relevant value to her life. Women want men of value. My definition of a man of value is a man who knows who he is, who is in touch with who he is, and 
speaks, acts, thinks from that place of alignment. Let me try to get a bit more specific about what that means. On a first date, which I've been on a lot of recently because I try to practice mm. what I preach, I'm going to let a woman know that I'm, I'm going to be myself, pardon the cliche. I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to tell dad jokes because that's my sense of humor. I'm going to talk about some of the nerdy books on my wall. I'm going to, when she says, are you into this cool thing that I like? I'm not going to lie to her and tell mm. her that I am. I'm going to say, no, I've never gone zip lining in my life. Tell me about it. Mm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be willing to tell her about my failed first marriage if, if it comes up and talk about the thing that I screwed up and how awful and lonely and rejected I felt just because these are all part of who I am. In other words, I'm going to have the, the courage to show the vulnerability and put myself out there. And in other words, another way I like to put that is be emotionally naked uh, and show her the real me because I if I wear a mask, if I try to put on mm. some other mask, if I try to be an alpha male, which is, doesn't even exist, if I try to be <laughs> a bad boy, if I try to say cool lines that I read on Reddit or some awful dating coach's website, then okay, maybe I can pass that, pass that off for a date or so, but the mask is going to slip off and then she's, she's going to meet the real me anyway. So mm. I'd, rather, I'd rather sit there on a first date and say, yeah, my favorite thing in the world is watching Jeopardy and writing down my score on my Jeopardy pad that goes back four years. <laughs> she's either going to want to date that kind of right. super nerd or she's going to not, and that's totally cool. I want to find women who love my type. And that's what radical auth authenticity is about. It's being the best slash realist version of you. And women who see value in you are going to go crazy for you. Gee, it doesn't seem that hard, man. But we, we messed it up pretty well. Yes. Uh, possibly, <laughs> I mean, what you just described is, you know, it, I guess it's not easy when you're sitting there in front of a real human and you're nervous and it's your first date or whatever, but it's certainly an easier path to go than, uh, you know, holding your pickup lines on your three by five card or, or whatever the, yeah, you know. Yeah, I've done the, that too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, you know, um, right. let's, let's, let's talk through where, where that boundary is when you do want to be yourself, you do want to be authentic, but hey, you know, I don't have an A game right now. I have a C minus because I'm, I'm, uh, I'm traumatized from my previous breakup and I just want to get out there and have fun, but uh, mm. I'm insecure, underconfident, you know, what does the coach step in there and do? Um, since mm. you, you can't be whispering in his ear like some of the movies or with the earpiece or, you know. Um, how, how do we get that, do, that guy primed? I can do a little bit of that in person when we go out to approach girls, but, um, but I, I don't like to do that because I wanted to come from him. So if you are traumatized by, from a last relationship, then you got to do a little work on yourself perhaps before you start dating. Mm, right, you want to yeah. walk into a first date or walk up to a woman with essentially a full cup, uh, an overflowing cup of awesomeness and be able to say, Hey, I'm here to make your life better if you're open to it, not in an arrogant way, just in the sense that I have something to share. And so, yeah, don't go on any dates if you're still dealing mm. with relationship trauma. Get that handled first. Again, being, you want to be a, an open book on that date, not an open wound. And, <laughs> and to that point, I think that, uh, yeah, it's, um, you could have C minus game on a date. Uh, women, aren't, women don't want a man who hits them with the cool James Bond lines or some fancy moves. I mean, if you make her laugh and giggle and are totally on that night, great. But something really powerful happens when you become congruent. Congruent meaning, essentially congruent means you, you think, you speak, you act in, in an alignment with what you're feeling. So if you're feeling C minus mm -hmm. on your date, uh, okay, there are some little moves and tricks to get that up to a B minus. But, uh, but if you're feeling at a C, then be that C date. Uh, share with her what you're thinking and feeling. So, so one of the, my training, uh, my training for this, uh, just so your listeners and, and viewers know, is I spent five years working with all these different dating coaches, pickup artists, approaching thousands of women, hundreds of going on hundreds of dates. And one of the most powerful concepts I stumbled across was by being congruent, by basically saying and doing what you're thinking and feeling, you actually come across as way more confident than you might think to women, mm. even if you feel like you're at a C minus. Quick story. One of the most beautiful women I ever approached early on in my journey, uh, 
I was with my coach on this rooftop bar in New York City, and I saw this brunette who looked like Dakota Johnson at the time, uh, who was my big crush, or who became my big crush. And, and I said, oh, wow, I really want to talk to her, but I'm just not feeling it. He said, what are your thoughts? What, do you, what would you love mm. to say to her? What's the most honest thing you could say to her? And I said to him, um, I'm really nervous and shy, but I had to meet you. You're my type. He said, cool. There's your pickup line. Go. Give her that real vulnerable line. I walked over to her, tapped her on the shoulder and said that. Hi, this is, I know this is random, but I'm actually really shy and nervous, but you're totally my type. And she looked at me, she tilted her head and smiled. And she said, oh yeah, you're real shy. Hi, I'm, <laughs> hi, I'm Amy. She thought it was a line. She thought right. I was a cool guy giving her a line, which instead yeah. of a scared to death dork, giving her an honest feeling. So that kind of congruence is a really powerful sort of projection to give women because it's honest and um, it's in alignment. She's not getting some kind of weird shtick. And it's amazing how quickly that, and guess what? As soon as she smiled at me, I went from a C to an A. Mm. <laughs> That's all it takes. So, um, but it takes courage to get that kind of confidence. Mm. You have to take action, in other words. Um, yeah, it seems, can it be okay to um, not not call it a pickup line in your mind and just approach a female in the grocery store because you you want to spread, you know, good energy to the world. And, um, you know, you, you could say, uh, have you tried those onions before or something just that doesn't have yeah. a, a motive, you know, and it might Absolutely. lead to something. Agree. I totally, I don't even, I don't even, I never use the word pickup line. Almost never. Yeah. I don't even, I don't even like the word approach, even though I use it a lot yeah. in my book because. Well, you call it approach purposes. anxiety. So I want to ask you about that too. Yeah. How, but I don't even like the word. That, yeah. I don't even love the word approach just because it puts, to, puts me in the mind of like a baseball pitcher with a big wind yeah. up and here's the pitch that can right. create anxiety yeah. to your point. Yeah. You're in a grocery store. You see a woman who intrigues you and might be open to chatting i think of it as op i call it open opening mm -hmm. in other words open a conversation so i'll say to a client go open say hi to her uh, because yeah we're not we're not trying to pick her up uh, at least not at first we're just trying to to give um we're trying we're not trying to get anything there's really no agenda here with any given quote unquote approach the agenda it'd be a nice benefit a nice bonus if we hit it off and we like each other and we're on a date awesome but the intention is not to get anything from her. The intention is to make her smile, give her a moment of, of genuineness, make her day or night a little bit better. And guess what? When you do that, when you make that shift, it does make the result better as a, as a dividend of, of approaching this from a higher plane, mm -hmm. as opposed to get laid, get the number, get validation. No, 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 no. We want to give way, way more than we ever expect to receive. The more we give to women, the more they're they, from an authentic, good intentioned place. Guess what? That changes your confidence. You stand taller. You feel better. You don't feel like mm. a creepy pickup guy. You feel like a solid gentleman just out mm. chatting up people at Whole Foods. And that's actually the kind of vibe women want to be, um, you know, opened with. Hmm. I imagine that uh, the reps would really help here where you just, as a matter of course, you're going to be friendly and, and conversant to whoever you come across. And it might be a, a dude in the park and it might be a beautiful woman the next block down, but you're, you're kind of, you know, away from that, that stress and that pressure of thinking, Oh, there's one that yeah. really, it really looks attractive to me. And now I got to uh, tighten up my, my game. And all of a sudden you get nervous. Yeah, exactly. That's when I take guys out at night for in-person training. One of the things we do is we talk to so many people that the part of your brain that is focused on how attractive is she? What do I want? How's it going? That part of your brain switches off and you, you go into this flow state. Um, it's a mm. flow state in the book flow. Mihaly Chick sent me high writes about this flow state we enter into in various vehicles of life and in meeting women, socializing, going out in the world, you can enter this flow state when you talk to lots of people because you're right. If I just, if I'm a target hunter trying to pick up hot girls in a bar, I am probably not going to be really present and free flowing. I'm going to be agenda driven. Mm. But if I talk to cute couple, old lady, 
Mm. Uh, nice, plain Jane, who maybe I'm not attracted to, but friendly. All of a sudden, I'm talking to a cool, sweet, smart, beautiful woman who I am interested in. Talking to her was so much easier because I just talked to these other four or five people. And now I'm talking to a woman who, if I was just trying to approach tens, I'd be, mm. my knees would be shaking because I'd be so in my head about it. So yeah, um, you want to approach the world basically, and you're looking for for that win-win, genuine chemistry when one when one of your people you're talking to is a, an attractive single woman. Uh, tell me about this in-person training. This sounds super exciting. So you you, you have a client. Um, mm. I imagine you start with uh, probably you're not heading out to the rooftop bar first and foremost, but maybe take us through that experience, how, how it works with your clients. Yeah, we will probably actually, we, we, the way my personal training works is you're right. It doesn't start with the rooftop right away. We do a little pregame pre-brief where we talk about goals, how I, I teach a system. I teach a five-step system that mm. essentially we make following the system, the goal sort of like LeBron or Tiger Woods has their routine, right? They're focused on routine. They're focused on a, a great major league pitcher. All he's really focused on is the catcher's mitt. He's not saying, I'm going to pitch a no-hitter tonight. So you, we fall in love with the process. We fall in love with the structure. And, and then we go out and we start socializing with people, gravitating to attractive women within reason, but also talking to anybody. And, uh, and you never know who you might connect with uh i took a, i took a client his name is i'll call him james I took a client out a couple years ago james at the time was about 50 and he had just gotten divorced after about a 25 year marriage really traumatic really painful he and he had literally not approached an attractive woman since the clinton administration <laughs> <laughs> so we went out one night and we're chatting up everybody we're following this process i call it the five master steps I won't take you through all of them, but basically it's just about getting social, breaking the ice and letting that radically authentic, confident self arise hmm. once the fear subsides. And the reason why we don't just gravitate toward women is we talk to anybody. Um, we started talking to this uh, young man, mid twenties, nice guy, army veteran. And about two minutes later, a beautiful Latina woman in a red dress comes next to him. I'm assuming their boyfriend, girlfriend, but you never know. So I said one of the most important questions you can ask when you're out talking to people. Hey, how do you two know each other? <laughs> They're brother and sister. Oh. Next thing you know, James is talking to, her name is Sophia, and I'm talking to her brother. His back is to James and Sophia. Unbeknownst to the brother, I'm looking I'm looking at James and Sophia against the bar and I'm talking to the brother, finding out about his service. He serves in the military, great guy. And I'm watching James and Sophia and I, I hear this and I see this. She takes his hands and says, yes, they're real and places them on her chest <laughs> and they're all over each other. Uh, and I'm just talking to the brother thinking, I have a really weird job, a cool job, but a weird job. So that night, James went out for the first time in 25 years and connected with this beautiful, awesome, stunning woman. And um, all that happened, all the, the reason it happened is just because he followed a, a process that gave him the courage to chat, flirt, open up. And um, yeah, so feel free to approach a guy because he might be with, he might have his beautiful sister with him at the bar. A Connell success story from the real life, the real life world. That's awesome, man. Uh, so back to this five year journey that you went on and yeah. you know, your, your, your checkpoint for your, your book promotion talks about this, this, uh, you know, this, this traumatic occurrence in your life with your uh, getting married. And then as you describe it, getting dumped nine weeks after, uh, was yep. that the catalyst for you to study and learn more about relationships or uh, let's talk about how you got here a little more. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It was one of two catalysts. There were two really. <laughs> one was when my ex dumped me after nine weeks. And as I say in the book, it was over so fast. We could have fought for custody of the wedding cake. So, so when that ended, I felt, I really felt rejected by all women because the reason mm. I, I married her is wonderful a woman as she was slash is very worthy, very wonderful woman who's since gone on to, to happiness and become a mom. But I didn't even want to marry her at the time, nor did she me. 
but we were both settling, right? And I was settling, and I think this is a, a recurring theme in, in dating and life in general, especially for mm-hmm. men, is we settle for what we can get. We settle for less instead of settling for more. So I was settling for the one woman who I thought wanted me. And then when she dumped me after nine weeks, I felt rejected by all women. And over the following couple of years, I I had a few dates, but nothing really clicked and connected. And what I really wanted to do was go out and, and meet women in New York City, where I was then living at the time. And I remember I was at a star. The other inflection point was I was at a Starbucks in um, Park and 29th Street. And this beautiful brunette was sitting by herself. She looked like Katie Holmes, who was my crush at the time. And I tried so hard to approach her. I even walked toward her. But then I kind of I kind of walked around her, her table two or three times, like circling her like a frightened shark. And I just couldn't summon the courage to say hi, to say something. And then she got up and left and walked out. And I said to myself, wow, there's, there's the 1,000th woman I've wanted to break the ice with in real life, but couldn't do it. And that was when I, I went out and found a coach who helped me take the kinds of action that I wasn't able to take inside. And the reason why I felt that way is simply because I was afraid of rejection. I was afraid... Mm-hmm. That approaching a woman, if she liked me, that would that would be incredible. That might change my life. But if she didn't, I'm, I was afraid that that would remind me that I was unworthy, that I was not good enough for women, which is how I felt. Mm-hmm. And that's the big bad wolf here of dating for men is, is we have to embrace rejection. Rejection is not as bad as we think it is. Uh, what's bad is rejecting yourself, is not approaching the woman or not taking the chance because you're afraid of rejection. I say, get, go out and get rejected a shit ton. Just do not reject yourself. Cause that's the one kind of rejection you should fear. Yeah. You're starting from uh, the wrong point. Your cup's not full. And I guess that's where the fear of rejection comes from. Absolutely. You feel that you have an empty cup and if she turns you down, She's going to take the cup and shatter like this it. And go, yeah, and then smash it on the ground. But if your yeah. cup is full and she just says, oh, no, thanks. Not, I'm not interested in sipping from that cup. That's fine. Not everybody wants to sip that, to sip that drink. Uh, to, to stay on that metaphor for a second or close to it, I, part of the, the idea of being radically authentic is showing women that real, true, distilled self. Sort of like, I, I, want, you to be, I want you to be a shot of Jameson your version of a shot of Jameson. In other words, give her that real distilled version of you. Don't give her a, a watered down wine spritzer, how most guys date. Give her the real shot of whiskey. Maybe she won't want the drink, which is fine. Not everybody wants uh, Jameson, but guess what? Women who like a nice shot of Jamo are going to are gonna catch a buzz on the good stuff, the real you. Mm. Mm. But that cup's got to be full in your mind too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. What do you see the women doing that you would, um, if, if they were if they were listening and, and wanted some advice, uh, you know, on the other side of the of the coin, um, how can how can they up their game or, or you know enhance the potential for connection instead of drama and nonsense? Hmm. I think that for women who are looking for men, I assume you're talking about straight women, but for any anybody, but I'm I'm speaking to straight women women. You know what men love? We love it when a woman takes a little bit of a chance to start. Gives us a nice, clear signal mm. that we can talk to her. It doesn't mean that you have to approach us and make a big deal of it. You don't have to be super alpha and assertive if that's mm. not your style. But gosh, I, I, I remember once being on the subway here in New York City and this really cool, cute girl just complimented me on my leather jacket and kind of with a smile. And that was all I needed to then keep the conversation going. And, mm-hmm. and that little, like, dro- I, I guess I would say to women, drop a handkerchief or two. Uh, we know mm-hmm. how hard it is to do that as men because it's kind of our job to go first. So when you can go first in real life or at least give us a nice signal that you want us to say hi to you or you want to chat, we appreciate it so much. We also empathize because we know how hard it is. And mm-hmm. it's just such a, it's, we, we, we love it. So feel free to, if you see that, <laughs> if you see that yeah, if you, if you see that attractive man at, the, at Starbucks or at the gym or at a party, just say, hey, excuse me, I like your tie, I like your shoes, mm. I like your t-shirt. It doesn't have to be super intense. You can still be ladylike and get, just give him, drop that handkerchief 
And uh, I promise we'll pick it up and, and be happy that you dropped it. Right. Same advice for the other side. It doesn't have to be the, the ultimate James Bond uh, smoothness. You could say a small compliment, right? Yes. Yeah. Start really simple, G-rated. This goes for men and women. Mm. That opening comment, that opening line, for the most part, it should be G-rated. Mm. Uh, yeah. Make it, here's a fun little kind of thought experiment. A lot of guys say, what do I say? What's a good opening line? Is it going <laughs> to be flirtatious? Should I be really sexual? Should I be, you know, I don't want to be in the friend zone. You're just, the, the point of an opener is just to open a conversation. It doesn't have to be <laughs> super sexual. It can right. be, in fact, it shouldn't be for the most part. Uh, I like to say, imagine that you had a wife or a girlfriend and open with something that your imaginary wife mm. or girlfriend would not be jealous of if you said that to mm. a strange woman. Nice. In other words, hey, looking good, honey. No, 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 no good. But maybe, oh, hey, you're drinking chai latte. Very cool. That's what I'm drinking. What's your favorite? Mm -hmm. What's your favorite kind? Or you know, what's your favorite kind of latte? It can be that simple. It's just we just want women are so used to being approached in a the the few men who do quote mm. unquote approach they they do it in a very like alpha aggressive weird creepy way. They objectify women. So if you just go in G rated and mm. are friendly, that's very charming to women. Um, yeah, and that's all you need to to kick things off. Uh oh, you're you're we're taking a detour, man. You're reminding me of a, of a Tiger Woods story, so you probably That's know it. But I remember, um, you know, when this whole thing unwound, they were they were kind of talking about how how did Tiger go from the the nerdy college kid who his old girlfriend is is interviewed on the documentary saying he was so sweet and shy and this and that, and then you know fast forward and they're blaming putting a little bit of blame on on Charles Barkley, Michael Jordan in Vegas and and taking Tiger under their wing. But one of the um exchanges they had was um you know Tiger confided to Charles and Michael that he was a little shy and didn't know how to approach women and they took him aside and said, "Here's what you say. Mm. Hi, I'm Tiger Woods." <laughs> that was their that was their life-changing advice for the man. He went up he went up with that A game and what what do you know? Yeah. yeah. You never heard that That's story? Actually yeah, I have heard that story. That's actually good <laughs> advice. That's good mm -hmm. advice. Except change the name from Tiger Woods to whatever your name is. That is a cool idea. You just come up and say hi. This is my name. See yeah. what happens, huh? There's yeah. So there's two ways I like to like, there's two ways to approach a woman, or there's two kinds of openers. I I write about this. Mm -hmm. There's indirect and there's direct. Indirect mm -hmm. basically means, hey, I really like your hair, dress, skirt, cool outfit, something in the environment. You're not saying i'm here to flirt with you you're talking about something in the environment if you're at star if you're at st standing in line at starbucks you say to the woman next to you should i get a cake pop mm -hmm. that's an indirect open because it's not mm -hmm. about anything romantic a direct open is something where you make your intention clear from the start and that's okay to do it's a little bit scarier but the reason i thought of it is because one of the best direct opens you can ever give a woman if you're feeling really confident is basically that the tiger woods move hey excuse me miss I just had to say hi to you. Hi, my name's Connell. My name's Brad. My name's Tiger, whoever you are. The, the confidence to do that is shows a woman so much value that you see in yourself that that alone can make a lot of women get really kind of, whoa, this guy, this guy believes in himself. And if you got good eye contact, good vocal tonality, that's a really powerful way to open a conversation. So you can go direct in that way too. And a lot of women who want a confident guy are going to be really excited that a man had the, the cojones to step up to them that way. So that was actually good advice that Charles gave, hey, gave Tiger. We, we, we didn't even detour. We came right back into the, we were right, into exactly. the zone, into the Golf flow and girls. state, man, the flow state. The, yeah. Golfing and, and dating, there's a lot of overlap. Uh, tell me some more about the overlap of golfing and dating. My, my overlap that <laughs> I recall when I was a kid playing junior golf and you, the, the pros – always had they were so slick and they always had girls nearby and you know uh, slick dress slick car it seemed like they they were um very easy with the ladies and so maybe they were given a lot of lessons who knows what but it, it seemed like the typecast for the, the teaching pro of the world that that was my memory from back in the day i think that the biggest overlap between golfing and dating is how it's probably for both i think it's 80 percent mindset confidence being comfortable in your own skin 
and 20 to 25% technique, at least with dating. Mm. In gol- and technique is important, especially with putt. Let's t- let's, maybe putting is a better example because putting mm-hmm. is all different kinds of putting styles work, different putters. You can break your wrist. You can, you can use long putter, short putters. Lots of different techniques work. Putting is all about confidence, right? Confidence and reps. You need reps and confidence. And dating is the same. Uh, you need experience. You need reps. And you need, to, you, you need a little bit of self-confidence. How do you get that? Wow, that takes a lot of effort. But I think it starts with courage. Don't let a lack of confidence stop you from taking action. Because in my view, courage is the currency that buys you confidence. I had no confidence when I started approaching women. Zero. I was scared to death. I, the first night I went out to approach women at a rooftop bar in New York City 13 years ago, I, did, I had the dry heaves in the men's room stall before we went out. I was petrified. And that's probably how a lot of people feel when they walk onto Augusta National or they walk onto the big, you know, tournament in their life. The first tee, their man. Club. Yeah. First tee, yeah. exactly. So what did I do? I could not summon confidence. I didn't have it. So I took action anyway. How mm. I use the value of courage. I call that a value. It's basically the secret weapon. You can't have confidence, but you can have courage. Guess what? If you take, if you take enough action with courage propelling you forward, the confidence comes. You buy it with that currency called courage. So now I can, mm. within reason, I can approach a woman and be confident and know what to say and, and get connections, but I had to earn that. Uh, and a lot of men don't take the action they want because they say, oh, I don't feel confident enough to. Mm. I say, hell with that. Use courage. And you might be confident in 30 seconds when she smiles at you. <laughs> right. Or you might be more confident tomorrow night after you've approached your first two or three women. And tomorrow night, you'll be more confident. So don't let a lack of confidence stop you from action. Use courage to buy that confidence. Love it. Yeah. You, you can't fake the confidence. It's, it's there and it's going to come in due time and through hard effort yeah. or, or whatever. But the courage, anyone can summon that. So that's a, that's a good Yes. It works for golf for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think it's, I think it's actually easier in dating than golf. Frankly, I'm, I was, mm. I'm way better as a dater than I ever got on the golf course. <laughs> uh, but you, you enter into that role um, due mainly to a, a strong interest in golf, just as a casual player. And then you just took it and ran with it for many years. Did you travel on the tour and stuff like that? Yeah. I met almost all the big players. I met Tiger. Mm. Phil, Phil was the only one I never actually met. I met all the biggies, Arnie. Uh, J- I interviewed Jack. Amazing. Mm-hmm. And I followed it because I love, excuse me, I love writing. And I knew I'd be able mm-hmm. to write about it. I, I wanted to write about something that I loved. And also, I wanted to play a lot of golf for free and get free lessons, <laughs> which, which, is, um, which was a, a thrill. And I loved it. I loved it. Uh, so you talk about you know, having the, uh, the the devastating breakup and lacking confidence and dry heaves in the bathroom. And I think so many of us can relate to that. Maybe that small percentage of, you know, the, the high school alpha male who was the starting quarterback and had a, had a smooth sailing, you know, maybe maybe 12.7% of the men are, 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 are blank on this, but most of us have had to work through uh, these painful uh, lack of just straight ahead, simple, uh, skills to go up and approach a woman with an indirect, uh, it's nothing, right? Mm. But uh, how did how did we get to this um, point that it's, it's such a difficult thing? You think there's some socialization or some cultural pressure because they, uh, uh, women are objectified in culture and so therefore, you know, we're, we're, our brains are in the wrong place or something? Great question. This is super deep. Uh, I think there's two pieces to this. Why is approaching women so hard is what you just asked. I think there's two reasons. One is that we have evolved as homo sapiens to be Mm. comfortable in bands and groups. And I feel like on some level, actually a sports psychologist back in my golf days basically confirmed this, or I should say uh, an expert in in evolution and and sports performance. He basically, I I talked to him about golf and then we switched over to dating because that was just (laughs) beginning this journey (laughs) of of approaching women. And he said, well, I think what's happening here is that 200,000 years ago, we were on the savannas of East Africa, right? 
And if you quote unquote approached the tribal leader's woman, guess what? You got a rock to the back of your head or you got kicked out of the band. Either way, you're dead. And I think the fear of public speaking, the fear of approaching, the mm. fear of social, negative social judgment, we're, we've evolved to, to link that to death, pain, isolation, uh, being ex, you know, basically extradited. So I think on some level, there might be an evolutionary thing here happening like really deeply internally. But what's much more common and more fixable, you can't fix that, it's evolution. But what's much more common is simply this misinterpretation that we have as men that uh, we all, every, pretty much almost every straight single man has a desire to feel attractive to women, right? To be the guy, to, the kind of guy who can get a beautiful woman in his life. Why wouldn't we all want that? And if you approach a woman and she says, and she rejects you, our brains are, are because of, we, we doubt ourselves and we, we misinterpret that information as rejection and proof of our lack of worthiness. So what happens, Brad, I've seen this so many times and I've felt this myself, is a man wants to talk to that woman and if she likes him, he'll feel like he's a man, right? Sex, sexy, confident, he'll be able to reproduce, he'll have a beautiful girlfriend. <laughs> if she says no, he'll, he'll catastrophize that. Mm -hmm. which is to misinterpret the quote unquote rejection as, Oh, she rejected me because I'm too short. I'm not cool, which means I'll be lonely and have to only date inflatable women <laughs> or, or settle or so. So the, our missing uh, this, this psychology, this misinterpretation of that information turns an approach into judgment day on your very worth as a man and whether or not you'll have mm -hmm. the kind of woman in your life. That's heavy. That's existential. It's heavy, in, um, it's heavy in eighth grade, dude. And, and then yeah. again in 10th and then again in 11th. You know what yeah. I mean? I mean, I, I don't think it'd be too heavy when you're 53 and have had years of experience. It, it shouldn't be too right. heavy, but I can definitely relate to that, you know, those early things when you're not even sure of yourself as a person and then you get rejected. Um, yeah, yes. it's, uh, it's tough to come back from, you know? Well, what I do on my that, that in-person coaching i do the i call it wingman mm. boot camp type training mm. we what, the first thing i do for the night is they don't start out the night by approaching i start the night out by approaching Ooh, and i tell pressure <laughs> no i take but yeah. i take it up even higher let's say so i'd say if you if you were my client we went to this rooftop club rooftop bar for example it's hopping beautiful women everywhere i'd say okay brad look around who is the least approachable woman here mm. who is the scariest most unapproachable woman and you might say oh that tall blonde on the dance floor surrounded by six of her girlfriends i'd say cool she's my first approach of the night so i walk over high degree of getting rejected almost a certainty right and i want my clients to see me get what i call mm -hmm. i call it getting blown out i like to exaggerate it to the point of absurdity <laughs> so we take so we take the 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 fear out of it but i say all right watch me get blown out probably or I'll approach a couple that's making out. <laughs> I'll approach a guy and a girl and I'll tap them on the shoulder and say, hey, can I cut in? And um, <laughs> you should see the looks I get from the guys when I do that, by the way, uh, from the guy who's making out with this girl. Usually the girl laughs. She thinks it's funny. <laughs> and the guys are not happy I'm there. But anyway, I want them to see me get rejected so then I can poke myself and say, look, I'm still corporeal. Mm -hmm. I'm still here. I didn't burst into dust. I'm still awesome. I'm still enough. I'm still a really cool guy for lots of women. And I want my, my lesson or my clients to learn the same thing as I want you to know that if you approach that woman and she rejects you, blows you out, you're still a man. You're still a great guy. If she loves you and she takes you home and you have a, a hookup with a bikini model, you're still a flawed regular dude. <laughs> you're still a man. Um, we don't want to get too high or too low, but mainly yeah. it's about not getting too low. So rejection, some, rejection is something to embrace, not something to fear. In fact, it's actually part of the process. So uh, we had a little hiccup in the, in the routine here with uh, quarantine for the last year and some. I, I think we're coming out of it in, in certain ways, but um, how did that affect your, the whole scene here and, and the people you coached? And, and, and in general, how has it affected the, uh, the, the single scene? I think that for obvious reasons, people weren't going out, except in Miami, to meet, yeah, to approach in real life. Yeah, what's up Miami with that? and other, yeah. other pockets of, of the world. 
And yeah, I haven't been doing my in-person training for the last 14 months for COVID related reasons, just for health related reasons. And, but the silver lining to this is that I think we're about to enter like right now, like literally right now, we're about to enter this golden age of going back to meeting people in real life. Even before COVID, there was a lot of dating app fatigue. Uh, mm. I've done, I've been parts of focus groups. I've talked to a lot of people. A lot of women say pre COVID women were telling me guys never approach me anymore. I'm so sick of the apps. I'd love just a cool wow. guy to come chat me up. Uh, uh-huh. It's sexy. It makes us feel wanted. It yeah. makes us feel interested. And There's that was before niche, 15 people. months. There's a market was niche here. But that before was before COVID. 15 months yeah. of lockdown. Yeah. And now that we've we've been on Zoom and FaceTime and, and, and the apps for the last year plus, I think that now is the perfect time to just drop, get rid of the apps, get your head out of your apps, and uh, <laughs> walk up walk up to an attractive stranger we're dying for that human connection. And gents, you might be surprised how much women want the right guy to approach them. Do women want every guy to approach? No. Mm. Do women want a, a, a authentic, well-meaning, charming man to approach? Hell yeah. Uh, even if she's not available, she'll say, thank you. You made my day. I'm wearing a ring, but you're amazing. Keep it up. Mm. Uh, and I think that yeah, I think that the second half of 2021 and beyond, it's going to be this new era of, hey, let's go out and meet people in real life. Because think about it. What's weirder? Online dating versus approaching. What's weirder? You tell me. Taking a rectangular box out of your pocket, swiping on it 87 times, finding a duck face looking woman who you find attractive, pressing a star, sending messages back and forth over this weird system, or doing what we've been doing for 200,000 years, which is, mm. oh, cute girl let me go say hi see if we hit it off one of those things is way more natural and normal than the other Mm -hmm. but over the last 12 years or so in the tinder age we've been kind of reconditioned so i i like both i like having Mm -hmm. a little bit of online dating fun and also meeting people in real life i think that's healthy but we don't want to do only online dating Mm -hmm. um we were meant to we were meant to meet each other in person and so thank god for vaccines (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one thing you said a while back that you realized you were settling, as did your ex wife. And how does someone know that they're settling? Uh, and where's that, you know, where's that idea coming from? And, and, and in contrast to saying, well, um, you know, no one's perfect, but we're going to work on this relationship and it has potential. Uh, rather mm. than a black and white, rather than a black and white view. I think that. Great question. No one's really ever asked me that. I'm trying. I man. don't think I'm you, trying to keep this guy on yeah, his toes, he, listeners. He got me. It's funny. That's how I got the Jack Nicholas interview. Is I pitched uh, his agent and I said, "I'm going to ask Jack mm. questions he's never been asked before." All right. And the, the first thing he said to me on our on our interview on our interview was, "All right, Mister." Uh, Mr. Big Mr. Shot, Big what do you shot? got? Yeah. What do you got? I hear, I hear you got some questions I've never heard. So Ooh. it worked. It worked. Anyway, what did you ask him? Um, what are some of your favorites? Oh man, I uh, I think I asked him, Jack, if you could travel back in time to visit your 18 year old self and give him one piece of advice, what would you give? And uh, for the life of me, I don't remember his answer, so I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm not gonna pretend I remember. It's been a while, but he he liked most of my questions. He he did give nice. me a little bit of shit. He said, ah, I heard that one before, but uh, not bad. <laughs> <laughs> Just the effort uh, counts right there. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that before you get into a relationship, I think that it, it's, in, it's in a guy's interest to be able to say, okay, I've dated around a little bit. I've had a few dates, a few girlfriends, or, or at least a handful of dates to kind of get a sense for who you vibe with and who you connect with. Because when I got married, I had never dated anybody before. Mm. Uh, I, I literally married the first woman who I thought loved me. And so I was coming from a place of scarcity. I didn't know it was settling at the time. I just felt like, hey, this is the best I can do. I'd rather marry her than be alone, right? Which, of course, is a terrible mindset to have going into Mm -hmm. a wedding. And hers was similar, actually, in her own way. (laughs) She was settling. She was totally settling for me. And, And so how do you know? I guess if you've never dated anybody and the first woman who kisses you and looks at you with big puppy dog eyes, if you think she's the one... Maybe she is, but give yourself a few options. Give yourself a little bit of abundance. Not saying you have to date five women a week and and be a player with some rotation. Not saying you can't, saying you don't have to. 
But I do highly recommend you get a sense of abundance because the right way to kind of settle down with somebody, I feel, is to be able to say, wow, Jessica's awesome. And oh man, Isabella was, what a fun, wild little fling that was. But wow, there's just something about Allie. Gosh, <laughs> she's like my, she's like, we're like best friends, but, but sexual energy is there. And we just watched movies all night and it just felt so right. I think Allie's the one because now you get to make a choice from a little bit of context mm-hmm. and reasonable number of options instead of just trying to glom onto the first woman who, who likes you. Um, so yeah, I, I recommend we try to make these relationship choices from a place of, of reasonable abundance. Uh, do we have an uh, alternative problem today with uh, an excess of choices and getting that uh, strained sensation of, uh, I forget the term is where, you know, you're, you're unsatisfied when they have research where you go to the car dealership and if you have 23 <laughs> choices and you, you make one, um, you're less satisfied than if you choose the best out of three. Right. Yeah. I think that's called, is that uh, something, something fatigue? Uh, like yeah, uh, decision not, fatigue. And, yeah. Decision uh, fatigue. Yeah. You can, yeah. There's, you can have too many options. Absolutely. Certainly a first world problem to have, but mm. a problem, a champagne problem, but a problem nevertheless. And I, I like to look at it like this. I think there's, there's different categories of, of women based on where you are in your life as a man. There's like wrong person, wrong time. That's a bad mm. time to settle down. <laughs> there's right there's right person, wrong time, which is trickier. Uh, there's um, wrong person, right time. And that's what a lot of men, where a lot of men find themselves in a, oh, I want to settle down. I'm ready for a mm. relationship, but, but wrong person. What I ask men to do, there's a whole chapter about this in the book, is is you want to get to that place where it's right time, of course, and right person, right person, right time. So that's the model I think men should try to follow is if you want to be single and and quote unquote, sow your oats for a little while, then do that to get that out of your system or to experience a little bit of fun and dating fun so that you can get to that point where you're like, okay, it's the right time for me now. I've sown some oats. Women mm-hmm. like me, all good. Now it's time to find that real incredible quality woman who I really connect with. And then when you get right, right woman, right time, boom, that's when you uh, put a ring on it, as they say, literally or figuratively. Uh, what percentage of men do you think today are looking for everlasting love to put a ring on it? And what percentage are seeing a future where it's going to be um, nonstop dopamine excitement mm. with maximum expiration date six months to two years or, or whatever uh, because uh, wendy walsh talks about this too where now there's no more rules like there were in let's say our parents generation where you're there's a lot of social pressure to get married if you don't get married by the time you uh, are, are two years out of college you're gonna the, the pickings are gonna get slimmer and all this kind of stuff where today people can choose whatever life they want to live and they may there's no, there's no obligation to reproduce anymore. We got enough people in the world and women don't need a man for uh, economic support as they did uh, a few generations ago. So how does that look on the landscape today? It's a great question about the percentage. It's, I, I think the majority of men want a soulmate partner, mm-hmm. long-term person in their life. At the same time, I think a majority of those men also want to have a little bit of variety. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think as men, we are wired to want to feel really sexy and, and significant about ourselves through the lens of women. I mean, think about it. What are the what are the top three ways men feel like men? Uh, top three or four ways: making lots of money, sports, muscles, and uh, dating success, being with a beautiful woman or two or three. And I don't think there's anything wrong with getting a little bit of variety. I enjoy Baskin Robbins more than any other ice cream store. <laughs> uh, at the same time, I don't want to be some 65 year old guy who's at Baskin Robbins every week. <laughs> I want <It> one. <laughs> I want one flavor. I want one flavor eventually. So I think most men are most men. I think if I was going to give you like kind of like the hmm, the not the ideal, but the the most common sort of profile of a single guy. I think most guys would like to date around a little bit, have a little bit of fun, have a fling or two, or just get some experience to realize, hey, I'm good enough. 
women do like me. I'm attractive. I'm sexy to plenty of women. Now that I've got that part of me handled, now let's settle down and find somebody uh, to uh, to to know that I'm I'm going to be able to have that love and connection because we all, we all need love. We all need that deep connection. Almost pretty much all of us, I think. So yeah, I think the number of men who are just like I want to be at Baskin Robbins for the rest of my life. I think those guys are actually a small small minority mm. of men. Interesting. Um, I, I guess we should we should end asking you about your your current status and also mm. uh, are you still single in New York City or um, that's your deal right now? Yeah, I two years ago I fell in love with a woman. I wanted oh. her to be the one. Uh, she is chapter thirteen of my book. I dedicate the book to her. Oh. It didn't work out. Oh. You can find out why if you read the book. It's a really heartwarming heartbreaking and heartwarming story at the same mm. time. So after, co- and I was about ready to start dating in March of 2020. Mm. Gee, what could go wrong there? Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Connell is ready. He has announced he is ready. Yeah. Right. I think the universe just said, no, now's not the right time for you. Let's, COVID's going to happen. So I took 2020 off from dating and I've been back out there again, the last six weeks going on dates from online dating and, uh, basically practicing what I preach Mm. and I have a date lined up tomorrow actually as we talk about this and my goal is exactly what we've been talking about I'm looking to get get back out there feel good about dating meet a few different women and then absolutely very as soon as is reasonably possible um, settle down with somebody really wonderful Mm. who feels I feel connected with who I can snuggle up with who I feel that sexual connection with because, uh, yeah, I played the field. Uh, I'm, I'm so lucky to have been able to get the kind of validation and, and confidence from women that I never had for the first 38 years mm. of my life. Mm-hmm. And uh, that, that felt great for a lot of years off and on. But it's, it's, I feel that's candy for the ego. That's mm. that kind of like j- jumping around, bed hopping, f- just flings only there's a time and place for that for many men, but it's really ego for the, for the candy, for the ego. I want something long-term more nutritious. So yeah, I'm looking for, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, I tell guys I'm hitch or I tell, I tell women on <laughs> Bumble on dating apps. Hey, I'm hitch looking for Aziva Mendez, which is definitely where I am. Ah, so. Love it. <laughs> uh, does this issue ever arise of your, your, um, your life's work and your, your profile? You know what I mean? Like, are you recognized when you're out there with a client ever or when you get to dating and you're being your radical authentic self, mm. I suppose, um, you know, there might be a certain percentage of, uh, of dates that would feel intimidated or uncomfortable due to your vast knowledge of what's happening in real time. And maybe your perspective from the, the, the 20,000 foot level where they're going to be watching what they say, because uh, you're, you're the ultimate perception and uh, you know, redirection person. I don't know. Yeah, that goes away after about five or ten minutes. When a woman nice. feels me being right. really genuine yeah. and present, right? Yeah, I don't Just like really on teach. This interview. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. You felt I, authentic I really... to me. How, how about you, listeners? This guy didn't. He wasn't trying to pull a fast one on us and and sell more books. Even though you're going to sell more books, you're doing it the right way. I love it. Yeah. Well, when you're really radically authentic, which includes being present, being mm-hmm. really present with that person listening, there's nothing to get caught doing. Uh, well, a good friend of mine, a good friend of mine said, uh, "Oh, Connell, you're screwed when your book comes out with the, with your dating life because all your moves are in the book." And I <laughs> and I said to her, "But wait a minute! Like, really, the moves are be super awesome mm. and find out if that woman likes your awesomeness. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, how do you get caught doing that?" Um, but there's one cool lesson I've learned in the last six weeks that I can share with your listeners because this is important. Um, I, I lean into the whole dating coach thing on my profile. Uh, I lean hard into it. I say, Hey, I'm a dating coach for mm. men. I'm Hitch looking for mm. the Mendez mm. that women either really love that. And I hear from them because I know, or they probably, a lot of them probably don't. A lot of them probably won't swipe on that, which is totally mm. fine. Just yeah. as in, in approaching and in any kind of dating situation, you want to make sure your online dating profile has a very clear, avatar that kind of just jumps off of a woman's phone that says who you are, whatever that might be. I'm a dating coach. Maybe you're, maybe you're an adrenaline junkie or maybe you're, I have a, I have a client who's like a self-help nerd 
And his, mm. his profile is all about, he loves extremes. He's into self-improvement. He goes mm. to seminars and there's kind of a sense of like extremes and women like that. So don't water down your profile, lean into like a clear, simple avatar that that's, that's high value, but also different than all the other guys. And that's, what's going to get women to kind of break out of their swiping hypnosis and say, Oh, this is an interesting <laughs> guy, a podcast host who also is a golf nut. That's different. That's not, I like long walks on the beach. Mm. Um, that's important. Yeah. And so fi- find your avatar, whoever you are, a single dad, a jock, a bad boy, if that's your thing, although most men aren't, <laughs> um, a super nerd. Uh, yeah, fi- find a clear, simple avatar to kind of show women who you are. And that's going to speak to like that market of women. That's how you get lots of matches on the, on the apps. Oh my gosh. Love it. Great. Takeaway advice. Dating or tell them you're a dating you coach. Don't. There you go. Yeah. Even if you're not. No, don't do that. Don't we'll, do that. If you're we'll not. Work that don't out. Do that. <laughs> you can become one. Oh, <laughs> Connell Barrett. Great interview. Dating sucks, but you don't is the name of his new book. Go get it on Amazon or wherever you like to get books. And how else can we connect with you, including taking it all the way to the uh, the, the private client outing on the on the rooftop? That that sounds enticing to uh, to someone in the right category. Yeah, absolutely. They can go to my website, which is datingtransformation.com. Mm. And on my on datingtransformation.com, lots of free tips. I have a free video series where every week they get free tips from me. And there's also a way to reach out to me if you're interested in coaching. Thank you for listening, everybody. Thank you, Connell Barrett. Da, 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 da. Thank you for listening to the show. I love sharing the experience with you and greatly appreciate your support. Please email podcast at bradventures.com with feedback, suggestions, and questions for the Q&A shows. Subscribe to our email list at bradkearns.com for a weekly blast about the published episodes and a wonderful bi-monthly newsletter edition with informative articles and practical tips for all aspects of healthy living. You can also download several awesome free ebooks when you subscribe to the email list. And if you could go to the trouble to leave a five or five star review with Apple Podcasts or wherever else you listen to the shows, that would be super incredibly awesome. It helps raise the profile of the BRAD podcast and attract new listeners. And did you know that you can share a show with a friend or loved one by just hitting a few buttons in your player and firing off a text message? My awesome podcast player called Overcast allows you to actually record a soundbite excerpt from the episode you're listening to and fire it off with a quick text message. Thank you so much for spreading the word. And remember, be rad.